I don't think I've been so happy about a new kitchen product launch in a long time. You guys, this new Vitamix food processor is a game changer. Using the blender base as the motor, all you have to do is swap the top container for an easy two-in-one high-powered blender plus food processor. Over the years, one of the most common questions I get asked is, do I need to buy a separate food processor in addition to a blender? Meaning, can the blender just do it all? And unfortunately, the answer is no. While I adore my Vitamix blender, there's just certain things that a food processor can do that a blender can't, which I'll explain here in a second. But instead of having to buy a completely separate food processor, which is more costly and larger to store, you can buy the new 12 cup food processor from Vitamix and it really does extend the functionality of your machine. And I have a feeling that for those of you who might have been on the fence about buying a Vitamix, this might just nudge you into buying it. Needless to say, I am happy to partner with Vitamix on today's video to show you a first look at their new food processor and whip up a couple of recipes to test it out. So let's get started. When you place the food processor on top of your Vitamix blender base, it just looks good and like it was always meant to be there. And this food processor, like others I'm sure you've used, does all of the basic functions of chopping, slicing, shredding, and mixing, but there are a few things that make it unique. So let's do a quick overview. Inside the food processor, I currently have the multi-use blade, also known as the S blade. That's the workhorse blade we all use in the kitchen for chopping, blending, and mixing. If I take that off, I can then add either of the two slicing and shredding discs. One makes small shreds and thin slices, and the other makes large shreds and thick slices, depending on which side of the disc you use. And Vitamix has labeled these discs, so it's easy to see. When you've decided which disc you'd like to use, just place that right on top of the gear stem in the middle of the work bowl, and then snap the lid on. This is different from most food processors where you have to twist and lock the lid, but it'll be second nature to Vitamix owners who already do this with their blender container lid. Now I've already got the food processor work bowl attached to the black self-detect base, so I can simply place that on my Vitamix and I'm ready to go. But I do wanna show you the quick release lever that allows you to just pop off the work bowl for easy pouring, removing of ingredients, or cleaning. And when you'd like to use it again, just pop it back on. Up top, you've got both a large food chute and a small chute that can accommodate a wide variety of ingredients, and the small chute will keep things like carrots and cucumber upright while you're slicing or shredding them. But I think one of the best things about this food processor is that it takes up less space than a standalone food processor, so it's compact to store and it's much lighter weight because it's only the top container. So to store it, add the slicing and shredding discs back into their little container, flip that over because it magically snaps to the underside of the lid, and then invert that over the work bowl. Now you've got everything all stored together and you can even put it in an upper cabinet because it is so lightweight. But let's test out the blades with a few veggies that I have in my fridge, and I'll use the small chute to slice cucumber. So I'll just put the cucumber through the top and it slices the whole thing literally in two seconds. And that was with the thinner blade. I can swap the discs and add the thicker blade, pop on the lid, and again, the cucumber is sliced up virtually instantly, which makes prep work a breeze. To show you the shredding blade, I've got some carrots, and if you want the fastest way to shred a whole bunch of carrots for carrot cake, it's always using a food processor. So I'll try out the thinner shredding blade first, then switch the disc to the thicker shredding blade, add the lid back on, and shred a few more carrots. No matter which blade you choose, slicing and shredding is made super easy. To test out the multi-use S-Blade, let's make my mango date energy balls. And this is a recipe that would not work well in the Vitamix blender as it's too thick and sticky, but it works great in the food processor. So I'll add 10 pitted dates and one cup of dried mango and give that a quick process just to break up those large dried mango chunks. Then I'll add one cup of raw cashews, two tablespoons of chia seeds and a pinch of salt and process it again until the nuts are chopped down and the mixture starts sticking together. To remove the bowl, I'll press down on the quick release lever and you can see that it's a thick and sticky yet also sweet and delicious mix. I'll use a cookie scoop to scoop out chunks of the mixture, roll it between my hands, and add it to a bowl. I'll keep doing this for the rest of the mixture, and if you find that your energy balls are a bit too sticky, you could also roll them in a little shredded coconut or finely chopped nuts. This is a great snack to take on a bike ride or hike, or simply to enjoy as an afternoon pick-me-up. 
If you saw my birthday recipe this week, you know that I made this mint chocolate vegan cheesecake. But what you might not know is that I made it in my Vitamix and used both the food processor and blender. So starting with the food processor, let's make the crust by adding one cup of raw almonds, half a cup of raw pecans, a quarter cup of cacao powder, 10 medjool dates that you've pitted, and two tablespoons of liquefied coconut oil. Then snap the lid on and you'll hear it click, and turn it on. When you use the food processor, it doesn't matter what speed it's set to, as it's just an on and off option. Once the mixture resembles coarse sand, you can turn it off. Then line a nine inch springform pan with parchment paper, remove the work bowl from the food processor, and scrape it all out into the pan. Spread that crumbly mixture around with your fingers so that it's in an even layer and then press down on it so that it's nice and compact. I usually keep it flat on the bottom, but if you'd like a little crust coming up the sides, that's fine too. And I should also mention that what I'm showing you is the same process for any of the vegan cheesecake recipes on my website, no matter which flavor. All right, let's move on to the filling. I've already gone ahead and soaked three and a half cups of raw cashews overnight. So I'll just drain and rinse those and then swap the food processor base for my blender container. Then I'll add those drained cashews along with one cup of fresh water, three quarters cup of maple syrup or honey. I'm using honey today, but you'd wanna use maple syrup to keep it vegan. Two thirds cup of liquefied coconut oil, two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, which is about what you'd get from one lemon, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and one to two teaspoons of peppermint extract, depending on how pepperminty you'd like it to be. Add the lid to your blender, turn it on, and quickly turn that dial to high. You'll wanna blend it for about two to three minutes or until it's ultra smooth and creamy, and trust me, it will get ultra smooth in your Vitamix. Pour the filling into your springform pan and then give it a few good shakes on the counter to remove any of those air bubbles. For the chocolate swirl on top, I've melted one cup of chocolate chips with two tablespoons of coconut oil, and then I'll drizzle that on top of the cheesecake filling. To get that lovely swirl, use a chopstick or knife and just run it through the cheesecake and melted chocolate until you have a pattern that you like. Once that's done, place the cheesecake in the freezer for at least five to six hours to harden up. I usually let it freeze overnight. When you're ready to serve it, remove it from the springform pan while it's still rock hard frozen because it will remove from the sides of the pan easier and then let it thaw on a cake stand or serving plate. You can enjoy the cheesecake just like this, <laughs> that's what I usually do, but because it was my birthday, I got a little fancy and added chocolate curls on top. If you wanna make those, melt half a cup of chocolate chips with one tablespoon of coconut oil. Then flip over a baking tray and make sure the bottom is nice and clean and pour the melted chocolate on top. Use an offset spatula to spread the chocolate into an even thin layer and then pop this in the freezer for four to five minutes. And I do recommend setting a timer so you don't accidentally leave it in longer. Once you remove it from the freezer, use a metal spatula or food scraper at a 45 degree angle to scrape the chocolate into curls. If the chocolate breaks apart, that means it's too cold, just let it come to room temperature for a minute. And if it's too soft, you'll have a hard time rolling the curls as well. So just pop it back in the freezer for 30 seconds to a minute. It takes a little practice to find that perfect temperature, but once you do, you'll have lots of chocolate curls in no time. The chocolate curls will soften quickly though, so it's best to keep them in the refrigerator until you're ready to top them on your cheesecake. So when it's time to serve this decadent dessert, add the chocolate curls to the top along with fresh mint leaves, and you've got a homemade vegan cheesecake made almost entirely in your Vitamix. Hopefully you've gathered by now that I use my Vitamix for a whole lot more than just smoothies. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this new food processor is just one more way to extend the functionality of your machine. 
I hope you enjoyed this product review as well as a couple of new recipes. And with that, I'm now going to enjoy some of my birthday cheesecake.